Hello and welcome to Euro Football Daily, where today we're examining the current crisis at Barcelona. A poor 2019-20 and nightmare summer have left the Blaugrana not only outside the Spanish title race, but on the edges of the Champions League spots, with their decline coinciding unhappily with blossoming projects at Sevilla, Villarreal and Real Sociedad. But how much of this is Ronald Koeman's fault? How does the Dutchman's Barcelona look different from Valverde's? And after all these years, is the Barcelona way finally dead? We take a look at the facts and figures to find out. If one thing defined Barcelona over the last decade, it was their ability to get shots extremely close to goal. In the last five full seasons, the Catalans finished as the top scorers in Spain, despite taking fewer shots per game than Real Madrid. And while an elite finisher like Messi plays a part in that, it was largely a function of shot quality. Using expected goals, we can see that on average of the last three years, Real's shots from open play had a 12% chance of going in while Barcelona's had a 17% chance of turning into goals. But Koeman's appointment has started a worrying trend. While last year's Barcelona's shots were the fourth closest to the opposition goal in La Liga, that has sunk to 10th this term, with their attempts on average coming a full yard further out than they did 12 months ago. And the side seems to have lost their ability to get the ball into dangerous areas altogether. While the team was often accused of sterile possession under Setien and Valverde, they managed to pass into the final third 49 times a game in 2019-20, while now they do so under 43 times a game. Perhaps most troublingly of all, the current squad has virtually no pace in the front line. Usman Dembele is still in and out of the starting 11, but with Griezmann, Messi and Coutinho all preferring to come deep and get involved in build-up, and Jordi Alba, once the club's best outlet, now 31, the only player willing to make runs in behind the opposition is Ansu Fati, sidelined with injury. The lack of through balls and passes over the top is clear in the stats. Barcelona are caught offside just 1.6 times a game this season. Last year, that was 2.1. The year before, 2.5. This is likely to improve once Fatty returns and as Trincao beds into the team, but by the time the Portuguese is a regular, Messi could be gone and the engine of Barcelona's offence removed. And given that even with the Argentinian, the team is on track to score 73 league goals this season, their lowest tally since 2004-05. Fans should be frightened about the future. Unless Koeman finds a way to get the ball through packed defences more regularly, Barcelona's toothless displays will continue. Defence is broken. So Barcelona are no longer the superhuman attacking side they once were, but the attack would still be more than good enough to mount a title challenge if the defence were solid. After all, Real won the title last year with just 70 goals scored. But while Real allowed only 25 last campaign, Barca's rearguard provides no such security. And in fact, it has suffered since last season. Though Ernesto Valverde and even Luis Enrique were criticised for moving Barca away from the press and possessed football they popularised during Pep Guardiola's reign, the Blaugrana remained one of the more aggressive sides in Spain, and with a distinctive pattern of pressing. In 2019-20, despite changing coaches mid-season, the pattern was clear. Barca's chief method of defending was to stop opponents getting near their goal in the first place. Under Setien and Valverde, Barcelona ranked 20th in the league for both tackles and pressures in their own third. They worked harder in the middle but were still below average, ranking 13th for tackles and 17th for pressures. But in the final third, despite Messi generally sitting out the hard work, they were second for tackles and third for pressures, pinning the opposition in and preventing them from getting control of the ball for any extended stretch. That helped the attack, allowing Barcelona to create big chances against destabilised back lines, but it also kept the ball away from their own penalty area. This is often an underreported part of defending. Big sides don't just have better centre backs than small sides, but they make those players do less defending. That would be even more important for the club this season, with Gerard Piquet's injury seeing academy youngsters feature at centre half. But despite having pressing in his DNA, as a Dutchman who played at Barcelona under Johan Cruyff, Koeman has not maintained the same intensity off the ball. In 2020-21, Barca are the worst pressing side in the league, ranking 20th, 20th and 19th 
for pressures from back to front across the thirds, and overall attempting a defensive action for every 11 passes their opponents complete, while last season, in a notably dysfunctional and declining side, they did so every 8 passes. In fact, Barcelona's three best pressing performances this season have come against Real Madrid, Atletico and Real Sociedad. While you'd expect that to a degree, those teams have more of the ball, requiring Barca to press more. It also suggests that what makes the Barca players work hard out of possession is not the coach's tactical plan, but whether they consider the opponent dangerous and can be bothered to close them down. If all this sounds a bit too theoretical for you, it might help to look at the expected goals conceded column, with the Catalans currently on track to allow in a whopping 46 league goals across the campaign. If they do so, it will be their worst defensive performance since 2002-03, when they allowed 47. And it's not just pressing which has caused this decline, as Komen seems also to have neglected set-piece work. Already this season, Barca have allowed three goals from corners and three kicks. That may not sound like a lot, but they only let in seven in the whole of 2019-20, and in 2018-19, they conceded just three goals from dead ball situations across the entire campaign. In a newly competitive division, with Villarreal and Real Sociedad flying, and a top four finish far from assured, those fine margins could be the difference between a merely poor season and a catastrophic one. We've seen that there are clearly problems with Barcelona's play and Komen's tactical setup, but frankly, it's hard to see many coaches succeeding in the current environment. A fan-supported vote of no confidence saw club president Joseph Bartomeu and the entire board step down in October, and the upcoming election to replace him only adds to the uncertainty around the club. Candidate Victor Font has pledged to rebuild La Masia and already indicated that he would look to replace Komen with Xavi. Rival Emilie Rossard has talked up the possibility of bringing Neymar back to the camp now, and all the candidates have competing ideas about how to convince Lionel Messi to stay at the club. Unfortunately, that may not be possible. The forward would have left in the summer of 2020 if it weren't for a legal dispute over the clause in his contract allowing him to depart for free because of the delayed end of the season. In 2021, that will not be an issue, and it's hard to imagine that events on the pitch have changed Messi's mind about his future. While Barca competed for the title up to the penultimate week of the 1920 campaign, they're unlikely to come so close to triumph in this year's edition, and in Europe, a 3-0 loss to Juventus suggests more ugly results could follow in the knockout stages. PSG and Man City are already preparing to court the Argentinian, and the opportunity to team up with either Neymar and Mbappe or De Bruyne and Pep will surely be too enticing to ignore. Finally, Komen's Barca reign is likely to be the most cash-strapped in a generation. The global pandemic forced the club to reduce player wages by a massive 170 million euros, but that reduction won't last forever, with most of those payments delayed rather than cancelled. But Barcelona's bank balance was far from healthy before COVID. The stadium is in the middle of an expensive rebuild, projected to come in at around 600 million euros. And as Tottenham can tell you, these things always cost more than planned. And more importantly, a half decade of incompetent squad building has saddled Barca with an overpaid roster with few sellable assets, which somehow still manage to be thin in areas. Antoine Griezmann will be impossible to move on before his contract expires in 2024, while Coutinho, Pjanic and Umtiti all have deals keeping them in Catalonia until at least 2023, costing Barcelona a combined 1.4 million euros a week in wages during that time. And there seems little hope at the other end of the scale, with youngsters like Firpo and Puj failing to get a look in despite their obvious talent, while extended time on the bench sees their value tank. Ultimately, the best Komen can do is keep the club stable and in the Champions League while the hierarchy is reorganised, finances restructured and the squad rebuilt. In context of Barcelona's decline, his struggles this season are almost insignificant. So that's why Komen's tactics are failing at Barcelona. But do you think we've missed out on any other points or do you agree? Please let us know in the comments below and who else should we look at as to why they're failing or succeeding this season? Let us know down there in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate a like. It means the world to us and shows that you are enjoying this content. And as always, guys, make sure you subscribe to Euro Football Daily.